Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ruchira Banka and your host for the session today. Uh, thank you all for taking this initiative to join this workshop and collaborate. I'm, I'm sure it's all keeping in mind the best interest of your learners. I would like to thank our journal foundation for putting together this workshop and let me introduce our journal foundation to you. Our journal foundation is a creative platform by elevating art private limited that supports the process practice and education in arts and culture across the globe. Our journal foundation shall help to create resources and serve as a support platform for students, teachers and art enthusiasts. It aims to bring in resources to enhance and encourage creativity, critical investigations, explorations and experiments that push boundaries of knowledge and practice and challenge dominant narratives. We believe that the arts and culture are essential to our individual and community lives and for a more equitable and just world. Now, with this idea of supporting facilitators with the process of bringing in IBDP visual art learning into the classroom, we put together this workshop on IBDP visual art unit planning. The first step towards getting this success in this course is planning. And we hope with her experience and expertise, our workshop leader for the day, Ms. Domini Deniston Hong, is going to bring to table an opportunity for all of us to learn and take away these learnings into our classrooms. Ms. Domini, currently she lives and teaches in a prestigious IB school in Dubai, UAE. She's a visual art middle years program and diploma program facilitator for the past 10 years and also an IBDP examiner for visual arts extended essay, process portfolio and exhibition for the past seven years. She's a certified IB workshop leader for IBDP and also a strong supporter of IB philosophy. She thrives for every student to get a unique and outstanding experience for IBDP visual art course and hence is here to spread this idea to fellow educators. We welcome Ms. Domini and are so excited to looking forward to next few hours of learning with you. And with this, I believe I hand over the stage to our workshop leader for the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I will definitely ask if we, if it's possible to have our cameras on to just kind of get that nice, relaxed feeling so I can see who I'm talking to, getting to know everyone. Thank you very much. Okay. Give me one minute. I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. One second, guys. Sorry, one minute. It's just wonderful time. My computer has frozen. Just one minute, please. <laughs>
Can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Please tell me yes. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, we can. Just click to exit full screen. Oh, there's, okay. It was just there. I think it's working now. Is it all there? It's good. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Technology does wonderful things at times. Can I get a thumbs up if everyone is hearing? Great. Perfect. Okay. So as I had sent out, um, I think Monday, I had sent out a jam board to kind of get to understand everyone's aims and intentions for being a part of this conversation, I'd like to call it. Um, I have been reading continuously, and I decided that I would be addressing a lot of the questions throughout this um, workshop or this conversation. I will be stopping frequently just to um, ask for clarification if anyone wants to ask any additional questions, if anyone feels that um, they have either to add or they want to tell me what they're taking away from that. Is that is that good? Okay, perfect. Um, again, the intention is for us as a group to collaboratively go through all the components of the um, visual arts course and so that we can be able to create something um, diverse for each of our different schools and our different classrooms and different contexts, right? I often tell myself that when we are creating or visual arts, um, I don't want to say per se curriculum, but when we're creating all of our lessons, we tend to think that we have to stick continuously to what we have planned a year ago, um, two years ago. We have to come to the idea that our students change the context change, the environment change, right? And IB always gives us the freedom to make sure that when we're planning, we are thinking about the students in front of us. Each student are different. We do not create a course that all students should fit in. We create our courses for each of our students in our class. Um, again, for we have two days in this wonderful time with each other. I plan to do more of a, a conversation day, which is today. And then day two is where we'll be doing a lot of the work together. Um, we'll be going through a scope and sequence together, and we will be also be planning um, just a scaffold of our first unit of any component that you choose. So for today, we'll be understanding different school contexts, how to plan for different contexts. Um, we'll be understanding the three, the three different components and how do we plan and have a backward design for that. We know where we want the kids to go. How do we get them there? And also be looking at a scope and sequence that um, I have prepared, I've used, and also um, just not say that it is to everyone's must use, but just a visual to see how we can seamlessly go through all three components within our scope and sequence. So context, this is something that I often believe as educators, we are so engulfed in the idea of planning and so engulfed in the idea of we need to reach the end at this specific time that most, most uh, unconsciously we forget about our context. And these are three questions that I put up 
hopefully someone can give me their interpretation of what they think um, context is, why they think is important, and how does it impact your teaching and learning? Does anyone want to verbally contribute to any of these questions? Anyone, someone, anyone? <laughs> Okay, I'll go ahead and jump start. So when we are when we are planning within our context and we are trying to look at the visual art course on a whole, we have to take in who are our students, right? What is this? The context is our school community. The kids that are coming in within our program, their background information. Do they have a specific skill set? Um, are they high on the skill level? Are they medium on the skill level? Also, um, what, what is the infrastructure that we have available to us? What are the challenges, whether it is time factors or when, whether it is, am I teaching online? Am I teaching face-to-face? -face? So this is what the context of your school of planning with the, um, the, the DP program. Also, why is it important? It helps us to be practical and specific within our planning. For example, I had to teach the DP program online for one year. What I had planned the year before was for face-to-face. -face. Yes, we might say we can make it work as best as we can, but the entire context of my scope and sequence had changed, my unit had changed, and even my contact with the students. Sometimes we know within the classrooms, we have to kind of keep pushing our kids to go, pushing our kids to go. When we're online, it's through a screen. We cannot have that hands-on approach. So it also, everything went back to the beginning. I had to scrap all what I had, um, basically say, all right, I have to do this entire thing all over again. How do I now plan my lessons and my unit to reach these children? Because I need to get them to the end product. I need to now plan. Well, again, I, I got to know them luckily the year before. So I know how to plan individualized content for them to get them where they need to go. Um, and that is how it will impact, impact your teacher learning once we understand the context of our school, of our classroom, of our environment, we can now make practical decisions of planning our units and planning our scope and sequences just to get the kids where we need to get them at the most successful and, and having them given that individual attention that they need. Is everyone with me? Any questions? No, okay. So let's get through to the three different components. So now we have, we understand how the context goes, right? Um, IB states that within our school, we need to plan and implement a coherent curriculum. And this helps us to not only uphold the IB philosophy is also where we are definitely trying to support our children through this entire process and the entire process meaning we are not trying to put all kids in the same box but we need to ensure that they need the, the, they they are the end game and the end game is completing all they need to do along with everything else that they're around so we have the I, I really like this visual because the size of the bubble is the size of the waiting, right? So we have the process portfolio, the exhibition, and the comparative study. We're all aware of all of these components, right? We are? Yeah. Perfect. So the, the exhibition is mainly, again, at the end, everything works together. We cannot take one apart and expect it to work without each other. So the theoretical practice works with the art making, work with the curatorial practice, right? <clears throat> Everything, it's a big wheel, a big, big machine that we as educators, we oil. And how do we now start to get to this? Once we understand that if 40% is for one component and 40% is for the other component, 20% is for, the third component, we now need to start planning with that in mind. 
for myself, I always ensure that I start my year with the comparative study. That is the heaviest section of the unit, of the, um, of the program. And it is also where children get lost a lot. It is where, <clears throat> excuse me, it is where students often lose energy. It is where the students often ask me the question, why? <laughs> So with, with the components, with the comparative study, I always start with a field trip. And this is what the planning happens. So to kind of ignite, to give them the big idea, to give them the big picture that once, we're, once we understand what the comparative study is, what is built around it, see the reason of the why, then when they're gonna get to the doing aspect and get to the exploring aspect, they see how it's all connected because the Comparative study is connected to the process portfolio, which is connected to the exhibition because they do need to do their curator rational, which is explaining how the audience should view their work, how the audience should make a connection with their work. And if you go back to the beginning, the comparative studies teaches you how established artists got us to understand that even without them being alive to tell us. So I try to have that ball shifting in my classroom three ways across, right? Linking with the assessed components. Um, I would like to say that 90% of each conversation within the classroom with DP students, they often lose the idea of how do I get to the screens that I need to get to process to my process portfolio. Um, what does it look like? Um, why, how, can I, how can I take it from my journal and get it to the screens that need to be talking about specific things that is being assessed on a specific criteria? Same as the comparative study. It is often a conversation of how does it look to get where I need them to get. And this is the idea of the backward design. The backward design is I show them the final product, whether it is a student from before or whether it is a screen that I have marked this year. So once I show them, show this, but in the back end for me, it is my planning. I know I need to get them to this aspect. How do I push them to get them to that? At the same time, they need to ensure that they're exploring. I need to ensure that they're making a connection with what, what they're doing and how they're doing it. How do I get them to create the idea that they need to be documenting their process? How do I get them the idea that they need to understand why they're documenting their process? So there's a lot of questioning on the back end. So for us as, as educators, I need to ensure that I give clear, I have a clear and explicit plan in, on paper and for the kids to understand. Time is a factor for all of what we're doing. Um, as we know, by, in, by the end of second year, they need to have their seven pieces. They need to have their um, SL or HL process portfolio between 13 to 23 pages. And also for the comparative study, they need to have between um, if they're SL or HL, 15 to 19 screens. So it is a time factor is big for all of us, right? The idea of has anyone had the idea of backwards planning? Yes, Damani. Yes. Um, in uh, where I teach, we call it um, understanding by design, UBD. Okay. Yes. And yeah, I've done a couple of trainings in that. Okay. It, it seems to really pertain well to art because um, yes. like even before I taught IB, yes, I would show uh, a completed student work and then work backward from there. Um, and do you think that it gives it gives that um, that wow factor for the students? Because when they do see how it should look at the end, do they put it together? Does it come together in their mind better than you trying to lead them towards Absolutely. it? Okay. Absolutely. Um, the, the problem that I'm having, it kind of goes back to your other screen. Um, I've, I've only taught one year and the kids okay. are pretty much done with their comparative studies. 
because we wanted to sort of get that done in, in the first year. Okay. I'm having trouble getting them to connect the process portfolio with the exhibit pieces. Okay. They seem to think that they're two separate things. They seem to think, okay, I have to have these screens for my process portfolio. So, okay. and they do them individually and they don't really relate to the piece they're working on that they want okay. to put in the exhibit. So that, that's where I'm having trouble connecting those two things. What I'd like to learn is um, how to get the kids to make pertinent pages in their journal yes. um, that show their and document their process that got them to this exhibit piece. Okay. Um, and, and there's, sorry, there's a disconnect. Ahead. There's a disconnect there. Okay. For me. Yeah. That, that is that is pretty awesome. That that's been something that I think I had struggled with for I would say two to three years until I kind of remembered how I did it as a DP student. So to get that connection through through the, the exhibit piece and their portfolio is that we have to now create an explicit plan that gives them that connection. Um, some kids can create the connection by themselves, but if you see that we're trying to get it or trying to give the uh, open-mindedness for them to reach the water themselves, we now have to create that plan by giving clear instruction, by saying for this unit, we will be doing one, two, three things, and that should create a connection to what you're doing. So in, in essence, we're not, uh, we have now taken, the initiative to allow them to understand, like we're, we're not even given the option to, um, to have individual, uh, how to put it? We're not given the option for the students to reach to that end game too late. We're now saying we must go step one, step two and step three to create that link. So, so if I were to, if I were to give them a right lesson plan, yeah. a write a lesson plan for an actual page. This is yes. what we're going to explore in on this page. Yes. Maybe, maybe two, three, four pages of exploration. Yes. Um, but specific uh, lesson plans for those pages. Yes. Is that what you're saying? That's that, that would be one of, one of the last resort for your, con for your classroom. Right, because we're already go. We're going to be going into second year in August. Yes, and uh, their their journals are a mess. Their journals aren't aren't okay. good. So this is the, <laughs> so so this is where now you will be once you have seen and noticed that this is a struggle, and it it could be a struggle for maybe one or two students or or their entire class, it is now for you to now create specific instructions. And as you said, it goes in the lesson plan or it goes in the scheme of work or even goes from your scope and sequence to so say, we're now going to be doing um, as much as seven pages of one, two, three content. If we're going to be on screen one, we're going to be focusing our artist research and our on, on screen two, we'll be focusing on your communication and your intent. And on screen three, you'll be focusing on your refine, reflect, and review, and it goes and it flows like that. So what you're talking is about is each each segment of the rubric. Yes. So one page for each segment of the rubric. Yes. Uh, would get, uh, for for one exhibit piece would get them where they need to be. It will kickstart it, and and it, then it it will become natural after that. It Let's will. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so, because. Um, there, there are required number of pages. There are required number of pages for each of your artworks that you're putting inside of the process portfolio. So it is recommended that for your, your, your refined review and reflect, you should have no less than six to seven pages. And that will be spread across maybe four artworks. I see. Yeah, and then again for um, for your criteria A, which is your exploration pages, there is required number saying that you should have minimum eight pages, and that should be spread across the, the number of artworks you're putting in 
when they when we um upload these the screens yes should should the kids actually have that um process portfolio in sections like that it's i mean it is they um, do the exploration <laughs> section and then they do the uh um I, i'm forgetting what the rubrics are now oh okay so it is it is yes and no it can be both but it is explicitly clear when the student have say hypothetically five works that they want to embed into their process portfolio screens then each of those five works would have set amount of screens right mm -hmm. so once it is labeled and it kind of flows that way it is recommended but it's not a rule but it's recommended to kind of give organization and clarity that the the, the student and the teacher knew exactly what they were doing to get the kids to the end game Okay. And that comes along with the scope and sequence. And I'm also picturing um, how the examiner is looking at it. Okay. An, ex an examiner is probably looking um, for some type of organization in, in which that is, yeah, which is which should be the um, criteria um, E. So that is right. presentation. Yeah. Right. So so if if my students at the end, you're talking, you, you keep saying end game. They have these seven pieces. Yes. Um, and let's say they had three pages of journal material for each of the seven pieces. That yes. would get them there. That would get them close to there. Yeah, it will be close enough. Um, it will be. I think you might reach the minimal requirement, which is fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. If if you haven't done a mind map page then you might reach the requirement, but is a good mm. start okay. to kind of keep working on. Um, it is, it's hard to pinpoint where you want a lot of your students to be, because again, you know, it's a lot of independent work and um, individual context and individual themes and a whole bunch of different ideas right. that we're not really trying to gather to ensure that everybody process portfolio look the but exact this is where way. this is where i dropped the ball on the first year okay. because um uh, i was a first year ib teacher and and i kept reading about this journey that they're going to go on this individual <clears throat> journey that they're going to go on so i let them work independently well okay. working independently does not work for these guys they're Again, yeah they, yes, it's they're out something there. that we have to kind of understand from the get-go within our with our context we know our kids you know we know we kind of figure out okay maybe my first month i kind of see that these kids need a lot of guidance a lot of hands-on and that is where we now plan accordingly and when you think about traditional art classes up until ib they've been they've been taught by ubd here's the artwork that yeah. another student made isn't it cool um here's the, here's the steps we're going to take to get there yeah. but that's teacher directed yeah and these guys seem like they need teacher direction. They don't, they are they. I think genuinely for the theoretical part, it has to be teacher direct. It has to be teacher direct, especially with the com, um, the comparative study and mm -hmm. with the, uh, the written aspect of what needs to be done for the process portfolio. When it comes on to the art making process, it doesn't matter how, how hands-on or teacher focused you want it to be every kid is doing something entirely different right um, so just just to, to kind of backtrack it is that once we have plan with the context in mind is that our students need to be more uh supported or students need to have better visuals or students need to be um have a great big picture of exactly what is expected in the IB course, which I do know a lot of students who do come in, they're not fully aware of what the IB course requires. And I'm then they're- I'm pretty sure I've, I've gotten them there with the three components. Okay. You know, they understand the three components and, and, uh, and how they're going to be assessed. Okay. Um, but they, but the, like you're saying, these connections between them, they don't see. Yeah, it, and it has to com compartmentalized. And you know. this is this is just this is a section that or this is just a, a conversation that I genuinely believe 
that if we have different perspective, it'll be better. My perspective is within my context where I have students who have different levels, where I can create two different scope and sequence that address that level or, and the other one that addresses me more being very hands-on in comparison mm -hmm. to my independent workers who they have gone through the MYP system, they've understand the e-assessment, now they're coming through the DP system where they already have that drive. Now I have the other section where I go through our first two months has to be hands-on with or comparative studies where we go through cultural context, where we go through um, qualities, formal qualities, where we go through all of that. Show it, show it how it is being done before and then have them sit for one, two, three, I think four to six weeks and get all pages completed together. They'll have mm -hmm. class discussions, they throw around the ideas, how did you do this? Now, once they have get through those, those required screens with me planning with my two separate scope and sequence where I have the independent workers or where I need, the, or you have the ones that I have to, again, be heavily on, you know, probably they get distracted easily, probably they are not too clear on how to move through this. What I do next is ensuring that they now create a specific plan with their exhibition piece and how that will be tied into their comparative studies. Because you know, the last four pages has to be influenced by their own work, their own- That's artwork. for HL. Yes, that's for HL, yeah. sorry. Right. For, yes. Um, so that again, it comes with a lot of planning. Uh, it's, it's heavy planning for us teachers at the same time. Um, it can change on the fly which is okay. Mm. It is okay if it changes on the go because we might have these wonderful ideas and it will work on paper. And then you go into the classroom and you realize that, no, this is not gonna work out. I need to either adjust it, tweak it, change it, collaborate with someone else to get it going, right? Right. Any, any, other, any other question before? Thank you, Damani. No problem. Any other question, anyone? That was really, really lovely, Julie. Any other questions? No, is it clear, clarity? I so need to expand on anything. Documentation, ma'am. Uh, while documenting, if the students are doing something different, different activities, right? Yeah. So according to their idea. So how do we document that? How so do we document when they're doing different aspects or different... Yes. How can we document if, for example, five students taking DP Visual Arts HL, yeah. okay, they have a different style of working, different theme of working, yes. different techniques they do. So yes. how we document for the school? That is not my main problem. Okay, so documenting should be on the students. Okay. The documentation process, it should be their initiative, right? For example, if they're doing their comparative studies, you ensure that it is, I, I'm not sure what um, IT platform, if you use, if you use Google Classroom, if you use um, the Manage Back, I'm not sure, but it should be on the students that it is visible for you as a teacher to see what they're doing. If they're gonna be doing it on PowerPoint, now they should also, you give them a deadline and they send it to you for you to assess, give feedback and they keep working on it. So the documentation -ish, um, aspects of it is not really heavily on the teachers, it is on the students. So they need to own that. That is their involvement, one of their involvement in the program. Because I, I, I would like to assume that um, with the three different components, which is heavily te um, technological, um, there are different platforms that are being used. Um, again, everyone still have their sketchbook and their journals, which will be a part of the documentation process of taking pictures and being able to put over either to if they're using Canva or PowerPoint or shared, anything like that, which will be on the students. It's just for us to kind of create an internal timeline to keep them on track and then for us to assess um, if you have a four week process of, of assessing or a six week process of assessing to make sure that one, we're keeping the kids on, um, on our targeted deadline and two, to ensure that like creditable teacher learning is happening because we will lose 
lose some of the kids along the way if they've lost interest if they're behind time things like that yeah um, good. The, the, did i answer your question yes yeah, okay thank you anybody else before we go to the Hello, activity uh, yes I, hi. I want to ask you one question yes <clears throat> like suppose uh for example we assume that uh we have 20 uh, screens for uh, process portfolio yeah and uh, 20 for uh, computer study just assume and yeah. uh, 10 uh, exhibition pieces now suppose this kind of works you have this is the target uh so uh how you are dividing this work during this uh two years course okay like how you are dividing it and how you are planning to complete it and when you expect them to complete everything okay so that's a great question um i'm going to answer that with a visual two So when, when we're doing that, it all comes down to our scope and sequence. And our scope and sequence is what plans out the entire course in two years. And two years meaning we will, hold on, yes, perfect. We will have to make sure that we look at our students. For example, I always put the heaviest component for my students in first year, because if they're the full DP student in second year, they have the extended essay. They have the TOK essays. If they're in the sciences, they have IAs. If they're doing um, any humanities, they also have IAs. So when it comes on, if I was going to add the comparative study in second year, plus more, more screens and plus the exhibition, I think it would have been all be overwhelming for my students. So what I always do is after probably my fourth year teaching IB is that my first year is where my kids do I would say 80% of their work. 80% meaning they have completed all screens for their comparative study. So I hit the ground running in September. Second, they at least have two to three pieces completed and they must have 10 to 15 process portfolio screens completed in first year. So when we're now going over to second year, we are literally just adding few pieces of artwork to get to the seven, well, the minimum seven, that's one. Two, they might have to, not might, they will definitely be adding the remaining screens for their, per, their process portfolio. And again, they've been doing a few tweaks, making a few stuff because first, the second year of the IB DP course finishes in March. So in essence, we do not really have two years in IB visual arts program because the, ex the essays happen early before everything else, the exams, right? I see your hand up. Hi, question. Uh, so hi, I'm my yes. name is Purva and I just joined, uh, I'm working in the uh, DP program for the last six months. Yes. So I have students who are from till their time, they are from different, you know, curriculum. They're okay. From some of the students are not from IB curriculum, but they decided to take visual art HL uh, okay. in their IB DP one. So uh, while some students are from MYP, they are already familiar with the setup, and it's easier for me to make them understand the requirements of the program. Yeah. And uh, but I'm facing difficulties with those students who do not who are not from IB curriculum or MYP curriculum who are from different curriculum. Yes. And I'm finding it difficult to create a balance among the students because the time also given is not a limited time. It's very time you have to clear. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I like how I can create an effective, you know, any plan focusing on all these aspects so that all the students can, you know, develop uh, together. Okay. So that's that's that is a concern that we all have like it's 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 a it's a very funny thing we do have different categories of kids in our class um i would definitely definitely encourage you to look at their strengths and their weaknesses right we tend to most naturally try to fix the weaknesses but if we focus on the strength the weakness itself will automatically come up 
and be a strength, right? So again, we would have to try to figure out, okay, we have four different levels within my classrooms. Um, I need to get to at least minimum, we set realistic target for your first year. And when I say realistic, if it means that you have to get the basic students to at least complete their comparative study or their process portfolio in first year, that is your realistic deadline, right? Once you do that, you not you're, you won't be working all three at the same time. You try to work at one at a time. And once you have one component be working at a time, that is that's an option to kind of get work done, to get the kids to do work, to get the kids to realize that this is what they're doing. Because then if they come, if you're having art three times for the week and we're each coming in and we'll be working on screens, artwork, screens, artwork, it becomes, practice becomes perfect. You're having the conversation, you're having class critiques, it becomes perfect. Instead of having, um, having three different components happen at the same time across the board. Some classroom just can't work like that because of the kids that we have. So I would, I would definitely say to divide and conquer, work on one component at a time so you can reach your kids that are either um, not as independently working as you want them to be, but the more we do it together, everyone will be at the same page, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. And can I make a suggestion of something I did that worked? Sure, go ahead. Um, I have a big whiteboard in the back of my classroom and I used a marker and I put the timeline of the two years on it. Okay. And I wrote the dates across the board, goes across the whole room. And when we have to have things done, I sort of portioned it out so the kids could have a visual to look at where they need to be. Um, so that it didn't get too overwhelming for them. But I think it's one of the reasons that they understand now how rigorous this is and how much they have to get accomplished is because I gave them that visual where they, where they, yeah. And I told them you have to have this comparative study done by the end of the first year. And they all got it in, they all got it done. It wasn't easy. I had to really push them, but, uh, but they could see that they needed to get that work done. Um, before they could move forward. And uh, it, sort, it sort of gave them the big picture. That's a good um, idea. So, so they have their own visual, they know what they need to get to, they know how to do it. Yeah, they all so took they a picture. What they need to do, okay. Yeah, they took a picture with their phone of the board and they, they know what, has, what needs to be done by when. Okay, that's, that's, yeah. a good, that's a good suggestion, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. I hope it helps people. <laughs> you see one more question, who's that? Uh, continuing to the uh, question which Rajni ma'am had asked uh, regarding the themes which uh, every individual student will have, which are different. Yeah. Okay. So uh, our school do not follow manage back. Okay. Okay. They follow unit planner three, which is prescribed by IB. Right. Yes. So uh, how do we go about uh, unit planning when it is uh, when it is a different theme for mm -hmm. every individual student? OK, that's a good question. Um, when it comes on to unit planning, we are not planning for the specific. I would say content, we're not saying that each student is going to be drawing a landscape or each student will be drawing um, portraits. What we're, what we're doing the unit plan is for is for the context of the classroom. For example, we will be going through, um, I would say the art making process and the art making process can be very broad because we have kids that are painting or sculpting or doing photography. So we're mainly mm -hmm. focusing on the context of what is happening in the classroom, how we're gonna be doing it how they be documenting, what criteria of, of the process portfolio we'll be focusing on. Is it criteria A, is it criteria B? So it's not specific on the content area, well, the art content area, but it's more of the art context area. Make sense? Yeah. Does that make? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So that, that, is, that is, I think for, I know IB also said for the DP program, it is not mandatory that we have a weekly lesson plan. What is mandatory for us is that we have our scope and sequence and our units. Why? 
it's very hard, as you said, to have a lesson plan that the idea of lesson plan should be content and context specific. But when it comes on to the DP art program, we have 6,000 things happening at once, but they need to all get the same. We, we teachers need to all be reaching everyone at the same level. So we're technically focusing on that specific criteria, which either the process portfolio or the comparative study or the exhibition at that specific time in our classroom. So, um, Preferably units and your scope and sequence. If your school has the idea to use the lesson plan, then you focus on the context of your classroom and what you're looking for, which is the assessment that the criteria that you're assessing. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. At this time, I'll be posting a uh, activity in the chat. I just want us to take five to hold on. I see a hand up. Is there another question? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm interrupting again. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Because uh, we are disturbing your flow. Uh, no, no, that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, 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 Ma'am, uh, I want to ask you, ideally, how many unit plans uh, throughout the, uh, this course? Oh. we can plan that okay. where uh, we can accommodate all this uh, uh, our components that's a very good question it, what I, when i say it's good it is a very good question um my last four years i've literally had eight to nine units over the two years right the group of kids that i had uh, that graduated this year, it was only six of them and they're strong independent workers because they're all coming from the e-assessment life. And I, I only needed six units for the two years. Again, each group is different. It depends on the students that you have, um, how either you give it in small bursts or you give it in big chunks. And the students that I had this year, I could, I had the privilege to give it in the big chunks because they knew exactly what they wanted to do. They understand my explicit instructions. They really accepted my backward design and they hit the ground running. <laughs> and it was six kids, the perfect size to get a lot of things done in comparison to my couple of years ago when I had 21 kids. And I had to be given it in small chunks to reach all the different. So I had a, a lot more units for those two years. So when I say that's a good question, I genuinely mean it. It would have you would have to think about um, again your school context. How many kids you have in your class? What are their skill levels? Um, do they work independently? Do I have to be with them constantly? Do I literally have to? Um, teach them each step of the way, for example, do I need to first give background information on what, how to analyze art, how to critically think about art, how to formally describe art? Do I need to be teaching those things before I allow them to do it? Because that does take time. So that could be a unit by itself. Then we will start with the gallery visit so they can do their review on the gallery visit. That's another unit itself. Then you come back to the classroom and now you're putting together your comparative study. You, and some kids do have a lot of issues with creating their intent for their comparative study. What do I wanna focus on? Why do I wanna focus on this? Because that needs to be in their introductory statement for the comparative study. So again, that could also be a, a unit for itself. But again, it depends on the kids you have, um, the facilities you have, the time that you have, all of those things play within your classroom context and it does affect our planning as we go along. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have one more question. Actually, recently I had a review about my unit plan with yes. my, uh, yeah, from my department. And uh, they asked me to, I know, uh, create APL statement, mapping APL statement in yeah. my unit plan, where I'm finding yes. a little difficult as it is very new for me. So if okay. you can give us some insight regards. Okay, so when, when we're trying to map our ATO skills along with our teaching and learning skills, it is not, it is not isolated. 
when it comes on to IB and the visual art course, I think is one of the easiest ones to think about it in not in isolation, because every ATO skills that is in there is what we're using in our classroom every day. Yes, so the, actually the suggestions I got is like select one or two ATL skills and reflect in your ATL statement and okay. link it with your assignments. Okay. So that is uh, yeah, that is the requirement they are looking for. Okay, and from from your school. Yeah, from my okay. school. Um, I would say try to link your ATL skills with your TOK links. Okay. Because whatever question that you're thinking to get the kids to create that connection it can definitely be linked with the ATO skills and then they can also reflect on that within the TOK links for the journal and you can create that specific question that even if you want the kids to reflect on and it will be visible within your teaching and learning okay that's good okay Okay, perfect. Any other questions? This is a really love, really lovely conversation. Any other questions? Okay, so I have a mini, just a little uh, task that I will put into the um, the chat so that we can spend eight to seven, seven to eight minutes just answering the questions. And then we will have a discussion on the questions that were asked and how you answered them. One second. to everyone. Okay, I've just gone ahead and posted it in the chat. Can we all just take a couple of minutes to reflect and answer these questions? Thank you. You have to give uh, access uh, to the document. Oh, is everyone is having that issue? I thought everyone. Uh, yes, me too. Okay. Unless we could just answer it in the chat. If that, if, well, however you want to okay, do it. Okay, sure, okay. Because it, it was set up for everyone to have access. Are we still having the access issue? It just says view only. Okay, we can just go ahead and answer it in the chat if it's easier that way, yes.
And also put a new, and also I, I think I put it also a new link just in case anyone want to do it over there.
we <clears throat> oh, sorry are we almost we have around five minutes remaining do we need more time before we start a discussion or Okay, so I'm reading a lot of these responses and very interesting, very insightful, and they're all on point that is specific to your classroom and what you have experienced and what you are experiencing. Um, Judith, I like your detail expression, um, connection of how you will take your practical work to your theoretical work to the final product, which is the exhibition. So I just have a question when it comes on to the, the connection or the steps. Is that, is it more content specific or you're trying to look at the big picture? Oh, is Judith here? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so. I guess I was just thinking about, um, you know, for those particular steps, I guess okay. I was just thinking about um, how to get the students skill, uh, work on the students skills. Okay. So I think really I would connect that lesson to maybe some portrait artists and um, that would let them see a bigger picture of a bigger uh, picture. Right. Um, and, and, that, and materials that's as well materials as well i mean it could be a drawing or it could be a painting i mean it could be in pencil it could be in charcoal okay. uh, right so uh, so i could expand it but i'm just thinking about um i'm still working on that idea of connecting those those pages those journal pages with a finished exhibit piece okay so in so in essence, you you have now um, pick it apart, right? Okay, so you pick yeah. it apart and and then try to put it back together. Uh, do you think that all students work best that way, or you have to, or for some kids, you need to keep it together at all times for so that they don't get lost? Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe maybe students. There are a couple of students that are going to rise to the top and okay. and want to go further. Uh, I have a couple of kids. It's a small class of five. Okay. And I have two of them that just are going to take it and run with it. And the other ones really need me to day to day to by kind of, day they, okay. sit with them and, and show them, right? Um, okay. Yeah, they're different levels, right? Like you keep yeah. saying. So my yeah. suggestion, my suggestion will be, and again, um, it, it might work, it might not. You probably have to play with it, with especially with your school environment, is trying to keep your standard at one level. Even though you know, because it's a small class, even you do know that you're gonna have those kids who take and run with it. Um, if you keep that level there and just pay more physical attention to those two or three, then it should allow them to rise to where you want them to be and so they get it. Um, 
if it was a bigger class, right. I could definitely understand you separating it. But for such mm -hmm. a nice intimate size, and then this is my suggestion, it would be a good idea for you to always lead with this is where you need to be, right? Um, right. Give clear examples or uh, give clear definition. Okay, we're doing our process portfolio on screen on your first screen, I'd want you to talk about your intent and communication. What are you trying to say? How are you going to say it? How are you going to do it? And how should it look? So once they start to figure out those questions on that screen, then they now need to communicate that visually. <clears throat> they will start doing um, probably ref um, reference research. Okay, mm -hmm. this is the idea that I'm going with. I will get a visual of someone who is similar to me. Again, I will cite that. Then I will now create a connection to my sketches. Mm -hmm. My sketches is going to support my communication of intent visually. And then I already have my written. And there you'd have put together one page. Now they will flow it over to, okay, I have experimented with seven different mediums doing the facial features. I've experimented with 2D materials. I've experimented with paint. Now on that screen, you would, you would allow them to talk about their process. How are the artists that they are using to influence their communication intent also use the same medium? And that would be one screen. Do you see how it's kind of flowing together? Yes, yes, I do. So yeah. again, you're going by the, those rubrics rather yeah. than each specific criteria I, of, I, yeah, of, I of the rubric rather yeah. than the steps I would take in a traditional art yeah. class. Right? Yeah, I think okay. I think yeah. for for um, to get the children where we need to get them and for them to understand the dialect and the the, the verbiage of the IB criteria we have to use it constantly we have to teach with it and we have to assess with it so they do not miss anything and they'll get the, and they and the connection will be made i got it thank you you're welcome i see a hand up uh can't see the name sorry yes christina hi christina hi hi um i just wanted to clarify i guess something that judith was asking about with the process portfolio yeah it doesn't necessarily have to be like all your exhibition pieces documented no. within the process no and actually in one of my trainings i was told not to have all the exhibition pieces but have some other work because essentially it's double dipping and they allow it because you have to like you would have to cite it as you know my resolved work in my exhibition piece yeah. but the process portfolio goes deeper you may have unfinished work that you're yes. exploring and also in your exhibition you because in the process portfolio since it has the art making tables that yeah. as an hl you have to have from one from each column, column. Uh, yeah. sl you have to have two you may have your exhibition only on one media yeah. so to have that coherency or something that that kid excels in and they may not include everything from the process into the exhibition okay so good question and it's also recommended that we never put the final product of any exhibition piece in your process portfolio that is one two even though we're inputting some works from the some works from the exhibition pieces we are also doing a lot of media study and media exploration. So it could be from the same art piece, but because we are also exploring with 2D materials, so we might be, or, or the end product of a student's art piece could be a painting of uh, her mother. But within the entire process, they're going through, oh, let me try a portrait in oil pastels. Oh, let me explore with oil paint. Let me explore with wash paint. Let me do it in watercolor. So you have a lot of processes built around your final artwork. And then you'd have the review reflector find on one or two pieces that you'd have in the artwork, but you never have the complete work within your process portfolio. If that, if that answers the question. Yes, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, yeah, and you thank you for that. Thank you for that, Domani, because I'm thinking about one of my kids right now has that on one of his pages. So I'll just have him redo that page. Redo, uh, sorry, yeah. I, you, kind of, you kind of broke up, repeat oh. please. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I know that one of my students has a, uh, a photograph of his 
completed piece on one of his uh, visual art journal pages okay where he talks about it so um I, no, that yeah that's more of a that's more of a uh, curatorial rationale probably no yeah so it's it's recommended that it yeah. it's it's not it should never be um a part of the okay process portfolio yeah okay thank you for that thanks you're welcome and thank you christina yeah i have a question so yes, when ahead. the students are doing this uh, experimenting with the different artworks, is that artwork should be connected with the theme? I would say have connected. I would I would say yes, but but then again, um, themes that started in year one can matriculate or or not matriculate can metamorphize into something bigger but it's along the same chain of thought. For example, if someone starts talking about um, different types of feelings, you know, emotions, and then they started this nice flower that signifies emotion, but then they now focus on one specific part of the emotion, whether it's anger, happy, joy, sad, it is fine because even though the theme is emotion and they, I mean emotions, and they focus on one, it, it is fine it's what you need what the students and the teacher need to focus on is ensuring for that curatorial rationale they explain how they want the viewers to view the work and how it should intend to evoke what they want it to evoke and that, oh, and, that and that goes along with mounting that goes along with use of material that goes along with use of subject matter that goes along with even down to the color that they use yeah even for the process portfolio the experimentations also it should be connected it should be connected um mm -hmm. because naturally they're going to start working they're going to start uh, building that idea and the process and it sounds very shallow but it's visual art it has to be built visually it has mm -hmm. to be built with different exploration of different mediums and as teachers when we look at that graph within the um the ib book we try to ensure that our kids use wide variety of material they touch all well not all but you set the target of how many materials you want the students to explore with and you ensure that they push to do all of that because each um number of medium the students get higher points yeah and one more question is uh, is the theme should be connected if the child is doing extended essay for the subject if the child selected um, extended essay for visual arts is the theme also should be connected with that extended essay or he can do randomly um truthfully i always recommend that all my visual arts students do their extended essays in art why uh the comparative study is basically an essay that's just broken up in slides that's one and two uh the extended essay is very, it's, a, it's descriptive and analyzing art. And they already have the skill sets to do that. So I always recommend that they do it. To answer your question, if they want to do the same theme, it is fine. It is because it's actually two separate uh, course, class, two separate things. Uh, it is fine, it is quite fine. Um, the, the important thing is the content of the extended essay. Are they comparing and co on contrast in art? Are they using a proper language of art? Are they, um, are they being able to answer their question using the visual arts language that they have learned? So it is quite fine. So, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, like uh, <clears throat> in comparative study, yes, uh, they are taken suppose one uh, local artist or something, and they are uh, uh, comparing some artworks. So yes. suppose they are taken that uh, one artist, one particular artist, and in uh, their uh, extended essay also, if they are uh, form a question uh, around an uh, artist's uh, work, so it yes. is fine, uh, the similar artists they are taken and they it are- is, It is quite fine because you create, for the extended essay, you create an entirely new question. Okay. It is quite fine. Again, um, art is subjective. We can we can take one artist that a lot of students will, for example, a lot of students do write on Van Gogh, but from different perspectives. 
So you can take the same local artist that you have probably, not you, well, the students had probably um, explored in their comparative study, but now they'll be creating explicit research question that they will be answering in the, in the extended essay that could be totally different. It could stem from the same idea as your comparative study, but it's just that you're looking at it from a different perspective. With the comparative study, you have to have three artists that you are trying to find the similarities. Mm -hmm. You're gonna um, with the, the formal qualities that you're talking about the cultural context and influence. Then it comes on to the extended essay where you're gonna take that one artist. So do you see the difference? So it is quite fine. It's quite fine. And suppose uh, some content. If they are carrying out uh, from their uh, computer study uh, to their extended uh, essay, then it is fine. It is fine because keep in mind that IB doesn't want to see all these courses disconnected. Hence, why they have the TOK link inside of the visual arts course. They want to show that it is it is all they're not learning in isolation. So it is fine that they do carry over things that they learn from different points here and there. So it is not misuse of academic honesty? It's not, it's not academic honesty because, again, the question that they're formulating for their extended essay would be different from what they're formulating in their comparative study. Because in a comparative study, they have to focus on three artists that they'll be comparing and contrasting, you know, like that. But when it comes on to their extended essay, they will, might take one or two of their artists to compare and contrast formal qualities to answer a specific question, and the question will be different from their comparative study, if that makes sense. Any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. Um, in process portfolio, if we are putting an exhibition uh, work, a final exhibition work, Yes. Okay, and if if you are mentioning that th this is the final exhibition work, is that also a double dipping? Well, it is not allowed that you have any final exhibition work in your process portfolio. Okay, it's a clear rule that you shouldn't have, you should not have your final. I want to say final your resolved artwork within your process portfolio. Okay. You can have studies that is built into it. You can have exploration that is built into it. You can have image that you're still working on it, but as you know, it's not final, it's not resolved. You still had work that will might change it a little bit, change a lot. The color did not work. The kid changed the entire thing. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I have one, Jamani. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to dominate the conversation. <laughs> uh, so, so, um, so can you just please give me a couple of questions that the comparative study should answer, like okay. on that intro page? Wow, okay. Um, brain, perfect. So with this year, my grade 11s now, um, I've asked them to just uh, think about what really bothers them in art. What, not that they like, but what bothers them in art. More, it is predominantly females in my class. Um, so they talk about feminism. So now we, uh, I just got a whole bunch of visuals of um, portrait artists, artists who are females, artists who paint females in all styles, shapes, and form. All different mediums okay. and I asked them to formulate a um, a question that would that would express why it bothers them um, for example one came up with uh, how different artists portray beauty using color and texture and the other one asked how how an artist um, signifies femininity using flowers, you know, what, what, what was the, the context behind that? So they all created different questions from the one thing I've asked them, what bothers them about art? What really bothers them? So for you to create your introductionary questions with your students, it has to be something that um, 
they're committed to. And when they commit to it, that means they've chose it. When they chose it, that means they had something that they either like, hate, question, pondered about. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like a thesis. It, it's, it's kind of like a mini thesis, yes, in yeah. five to six lines. <laughs> mini thesis, five to six sentences. If yeah. you, because right now they just sort of have a vague, on their intro pages, they just sort of have a vague description of what this is going to be about. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's a little vague at the moment. Um, it should could. be it should be more it shouldn't be more descriptive it should be more with these three artists we were looking at the difference you the differences of uh for example the different use of um, interpretation of beauty by looking at the cultural context looking at the formal qualities use of color to kind of answer the question okay so, yeah so i think i see you think that's what i'm going on i'd have to i'd have to probably pull up one of my student works to show. I would love that. <laughs> but yeah, that's okay. Uh, okay. That's okay. I'll let somebody else move okay. forward. Th thank you, Damani. No problem. Um, I'm looking at, hope, is it Ganju? Yeah, that's me. Yes, hi. I'm reading your feedback. And I am intrigued to ask you if you can elaborate on your second part. Oh, so well, my second part is just a very practical activity that I always do in my classroom. Like I have written to you before, I don't actually teach IBDP. I mean, I have taught A-levels. Okay. So I pretty much understand exactly where you're coming from, but from a slightly Cambridge aspect, okay. aspect right now. Though I've been teaching PYP for the last over a year, so okay. I am completely familiar with the IB language and the working of IB. So I'm trying okay. to integrate what I know from A levels along okay. with PYP, along, along with, with some I. practicality and some skill development. Because in my in my time at the schools, wherever I've worked in 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 at India in, and outside India, okay. I found uh, children generally lack some basic skills. Which usually it, yeah. it just happens and it's not that they're bad they just somehow haven't been taught it at the right time and me teaching PYP somehow I emphasize that a lot with my younger kids so that by the time they come to grade six they're okay they, yeah. they can they can match up with everyone else but unfortunately when I have taught the senior grades I haven't found that the students quite get there yeah so every time I try to introduce an activity which is more fun and hands-on and something that intrigues them. So that is why I put that activity there that okay. they can they can take a mirror and they can try drawing themselves and they can build it from okay. one, two, three, four. So it becomes like a build up for them. And then they can, it's like planning a portrait backwards, but only starting out with themselves. Okay. So something just to get the creative juices flowing without telling them what to do. Because as a teacher, I don't feel it's, it's always fair to tell them what to do. I'd like yes. my students to come up with their own ideas and their own thoughts and their own ways of doing things. Because I may know one way, someone may know another, and okay. it may be better than mine. So I'm not the best judge of everyone. Which I mean, no, no, no teacher. None of us in. are. None of yeah. us are. So every student is amazing in their yeah. own, own little space. And if you give... In my opinion, I may not be right, but I feel that if I give them a little room to show me what they can do within a space where we choose portraits and everyone works toward that one concept and we say, okay, we're gonna work with portraits for say six weeks or four weeks. Yeah. So then you give them an activity to start them out. So it's immediately a confidence builder, one, to their intrigue. So yeah. they'll try, if I tell them, okay, let's just use watercolor pencils today. Let's not do anything else. Let's just take one medium and let's work with that. Okay. And then within that, we build on that. We add pastels over it. We can redraw on it. We, you know, because that, that's a medium which has so much fluidity that we can pretty much come around it. I mean, like I said, I, I come from a little different. I haven't done IBDP. So okay. I, my mindset is more like, you know, I try to experiment with the, with the students in a way that I also understand where their skill level is. So okay. then it becomes easier for me to take them forward. Like I can, by looking at the work, I can pick and see that, okay, this student is good at this. So this is amazing. Now let's take this quality and let's, let's help the student develop this quality into to the next level. So that during the two years that I spend in, in the completion of the course, the student should use their strengths first. Doesn't yeah. matter the weaknesses. The weaknesses yeah. are always going to be there. We all have yeah. them. I mean, I can't, do, I can't do everything. 
yeah so no one can do everything we all yeah, which is very true which is very true and we would I, take those 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 strengths and yeah. then we kind of uh stare it to where we know that they need to get to the end of the course yes i just have a practical approach in my classroom it That's is fine. it is conceptual it is theory it is everything but i yeah. like them to think for themselves i yeah. give them words and i make them think i ask ask them what does it mean to you how would you use it what do you understand okay. how can you use it in your work so i like to hear them talk i talk less but i give them the chance to tell me what they think it helps me to help them rather I understand. Than rather than me telling them like do it this way that's not yeah i understand so that's the reason why i put that because okay. i just wanted to share a different approach i don't know if it it works and at ibdp level you could guide me over there i'm here to understand yeah. how ibdp is different and how how i can do a practical activity along with everything else and at once at once helping the children grow and helping them understand how to take that forward into something else i understand yeah which is which um the the dp program is is set for high stakes summitives and when it's set for high stakes there are a certain amount of uh timeline that needs to be set and hit to get to meet the deadlines not only for our internal self which is in our classroom but also to ensure the kids can reach that with the rigor reach that endpoint with the rigor because ib created the visual arts program as basically first year of college ib um, art program so they need to ensure that they can step up to the plate do what they need to do and get that creditable experience in high school classroom so that we know that they 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 can transfer that international minded outside when they go to college so it's it is it's different it is different from middle from middle years which is uh more of exploring and um creating with uh i would say with hopes and dreams when it comes on to the dp it's more have an explicit intent of what needs to be done and how to get there if everyone understand what i'm trying to say yeah okay so i'd like to share my experience only ma'am as you said like you gave word with a scheme and uh, for the students i did a yeah. similar kind of thing in my class as well so what i gave them is like i gave them a word metaphor and i gave them some old movies to watch and yeah. i asked them to you know uh, submit or you know notice those where they think you know uh, meta metaphor are used you know yeah. uh, to represent scenes or something like that and later on i included this activity to do a self portrait portrait of themselves or otherwise any situations they have been in okay you know, so they were able to break like uh, before because may still uh, what many students i have as i already mentioned they are from different curriculums yeah. their approach was different so while i say about self portrait rather than drawing themselves as it is they didn't know the different approaches of self portrait okay you know? so which is very true yeah is, Actually, this it opens. Giving them the, you know, purpose, giving them a task, and ask them to analyze how metaphor be used, or how we can manipulate the meaning of any object or any situation. So it actually helps them to develop a creative approach as well. Yes, work. which is very true. Thank you very much for that. That is very true. Thank you. Any other input? No. Okay, so we are. Uh, I would love to say this has been an insightful conversation. I hope that I got to everyone's questions, even the Padlet questions that you had put first. I really hope that I got through to everyone's question. Um, today was more of the conversation day. Tomorrow we would, will be the doing day. We would actually be getting in our groups and we'd be completing the scheme of work and putting together the scaffold of our first unit as a group um and i'm excited to do that just to get that conversation going and the planning actually we spoke about it today now let's start putting it on paper to see you know the challenges that we might face or how we're going to problem solve and to get our students where we need to get them which is ideally to get through to the high stakes summative okay any other question any anybody want to say anything before we go no can I get Thank a thumbs up? Thank you, Jumani. Thank you. Okay.
Well, hold, there's one question. Go ahead. No, I have a question. I don't have any idea about DP, but okay. uh, it's a in, uh, I just want to know that is it expected from the student by MYP5, they should explore all the mediums and they by that time they understand all the mediums because I think DP is not a time when they do the experiment and you know wasting their time because it's a time where they uh, they have a limited time and they okay. had so many things so they have to be more clear about uh, in what medium they are good and what they mm. want to create which is that it, correct? it's yes and no yes and no yes meaning um you do have times within your with your, your two-year curriculum or or scope and sequence that you will teach some new medium right yeah but also know that if they were in a school that has a progressive art program, they would have been exploring with a whole bunch of mediums from grade six right through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a yes and no. But I've I've had students that came to DP art that was only used to probably three or two mediums. And while they were exploring, I was also teaching while they were exploring. Okay. So so it, it depends on it, the yeah student his ability and skills right yeah so it's a yes and no answer because oh. um uh, for my school the the curriculum that i've written for grade six right through to ess within grade 10 they have they have at least touch every form of medium whether it's 2d 3d digital so i'm giving kids a chance to be able to think freely when they come to dp so it's not more of me teaching but now I'm teaching how to create art and yeah. and creativity outside the box. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So okay. it depends on the, again, the school context. Thank and you. then sometimes we do have to be crash course and while we're, while we, we get these kids. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So Domani, it sounds like your kids come from a good background. <laughs> I'm good as relative. <laughs> good as yeah, relative. Good as relative. Yeah. Good as relative. Um, yeah. It's 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 been it's been challenging. I've had kids who has never done art, but they were let into a DP program. I've also had kids who um, only focus on art. I've had kids who I saw the skill in them, and I had to bring their belief with their skill. So I've it's been challenging ac across the year. I've just had really good three years. <laughs> what I mean good, I mean really easy three years. I hope it stays at that for next year. But Excellent. yeah. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you for coming, everyone. Um, I do look forward to tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be a lot of us um, doing stuff. I would say if you have any um, teaching materials that you have, probably you want to focus on something specific that you want to start with September to kind of get the jump on it while we're going through a scope and sequence and a um, and, uh, scaffolding for a unit. Um, also, I know my school uses um, manage back. So I've had the manage back unit plan template. If you do not use the manage back unit template, I would ask that you carry your own template or if you want to use a template that is provided. But I, as you said, my school, we use the, the manage back program. I know other schools might use Toddle or might use Moodle. It's different for different schools. But I just want us to get the theoretical part of building that unit, the scaffold area, which is the context of it, so that you can now focus on the, the step by step what you'll be doing with the kids. So that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. So if you can share some sample. Samples of written unit or templates. Yeah. Or written. OK, I, I, I have written. It's just that my school logo is on it. So I probably have to crop it out of it. So it will be helpful for us. Okay. I can, I can gladly share my scope and sequence that I have for the two years for the DP program to see, yes. to see how I have built it out. And this was freshly done for uh, this year because of, I have very strong kids. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will share that tomorrow. I'll just prepare that. One take or two, along with scope and sequence, one or two unit planners also. Okay, I, that, I, will, I will take the unit plan. I will just crop my school logo out of it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you will see how, but you'd have, but it would be nice if someone tells me if they want me to, to share the comparative study 
unit or the process portfolio unit or exhibition which is one of each if you can share it will be more yeah, that better. will be better oh. yes, yes yes okay so one unit of each yes okay i'll just have to, no problem i just go to my manager back and download them okay perfect i will get those things ready for us tomorrow um thank you again for coming thank you for the lovely conversation and i and i've also learned a lot from you guys trust me just different context is very good <laughs> okay so i see you tomorrow okay bye okay. bye bye thank you bye thank you for bye. today bye.